Yo, what's going on gamers? Today I'm gonna show you how to build for Gladiator Stance Boyer for Raid PvE DPS. Now, mind you, this footage was all before the nerfs to the bosses and everything. Also, this was with Bug Gladiator Stance where Devastate was doing 100% damage instead of 150% damage like it's supposed to and intended. So, all these buffs and crazy stuff happened after, the, uh, after this raid, basically, next thing in the morning when I woke up. So, it's pretty unlucky. We could have seen some better and higher numbers. But anyways, 100 shield gladiator stance. Now, I was running dent as DPS. My boy Shreds here was tanking in the same spec and is the best tanking build as well. But for this build, you need to really be, be like 4% like the hit chance at least or 3%. It's pretty reliant on the on hit, but I mean that goes for any melee. Crit chance is also another thing, another factor you wanna focus on. I did not have all the all the consumables here. I was missing Songflower, which is 5% crit chance, and I did miss Elixir of Mongoose, which is 2%, so overall 7% more crit chance. Now, when the the bosses got nerfed overnight, so people are clearing the raids, you can easily get the world buff, which by the way drops in Booty Bay. Or on the island on the right side, I think, from uh, on the map. So there's another five percent there. So from these three things, you can get thirteen, sorry, twelve percent crit chance. Crazy. Also, my highest hit so far was five and a half k. Sadly, it 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 could have been more, but um, I could have had a higher hit, but it never crit. Just execute as really crit with hunter rage and all the buffs. Anyways, we wanna save death wish, all unused effects and basic rage or blood rage for flagellation. You want to save it for execute phase, also recklessness. Now you can see my recklessness is up. I could have popped recklessness. Like, I did so many mistakes in the raid, it's insane. On the first boss, I could have had a really nice parse. I had only 996, but on the I missed like 15 seconds because I was standing there at the, at the spike waiting for mechanic, which didn't happen. Anyways, it happened 15 seconds later. That's that, and also Recklessness, I fat fingered Recklessness, popped it on my way to a boss when we were buffing ourselves on a platform, and the second time when I popped Rec was on boss, but on the last 5%, so this was that was not really too hard. Overall, I'm really liking the raid, I'm a big fan of that, I really do. I'm glad what they did with Sunken Temple. The difficulty here on Shade of Rhinicus especially, which is boss after this, Really, really hard boss, I would say. That was uh, pretty rough, but even with that, I I did enjoy it. And we'll see how it goes with the uh, but you know with the with the with the new stuff, the new with the new modification or difficulty in the raid. Sadly, that's one thing we have to wait seven days until we can pop again. I'm not really used to that, right? I'm used to three day three day lockout, which was my favorite in this term. But when it comes to roster, it was not good at all. So this is just a little bit of showcase of the build and like overall the bows. This was another of the worst parts here. I'm gonna show you now what kind of uh, thing am I gonna get five and a half k here? I don't think so. I think my hit five and a half k was on a different boss. Anyway, these are my par my parts from the first run. Now, obviously, at this current moment, there is a bug trinket, sandstorm, dark moon. It does so much damage and DPS. It's fucking disgusting. Excuse my French, but. It's something, you know, people are doing right now it's for parses and damage, so it's kind of hard to compete with that. But, uh, first two bosses is pretty good. Uh, the Rod Slime was a bit of a mess. No one really knew what to do. Third boss, I sadly died. I couldn't survive. And you know how it goes with melees? It's all about the RNG gods and procs for crits and wild strikes, pretty much. So, overall, I mean, playing a new new build, whatnot, no, and with the bug, the Devastate, it wasn't too bad, I would say. It was... It was Right. On top of the mistakes I made. Also, you would want to use execute and execute phase. Now, people think the execute doesn't that add that much damage, but it does. So, this is just a little thing of a jiggy, a little sauce here. I'm gonna take you to the game right now and we're gonna talk about the talents and all the other good stuff. So, we are running the same setup as for Fury. Start of a cruelty for crit chance, unbridled for rage, bellish out for attack power, and rage to access flurry. We go three out of five. And we put a death wish. Now we need four more points. Next one is execute. And the other two points are up to you. But I don't see anywhere else than cleaves. This is really good. Some most of the bosses have AoE as well, so comes in handy. If you play PvP, you could put one point in AoE slow. 
Right, now arms we go with heroic strike because we spam that. Uh, rent to access deep wounds, the parry and charge. These two points are again optional. You can go full parry if you want, if you do off tanking. No problem. And deep wounds, this is uh, really crazy. Dot, it does so much damage. It's pretty insane. You can search me, you can search me up on uh, logs, for example, and they could look how much it does. So this is the standard setup for this, this combo wombo. Good stuff. I know it's fury, but yeah, Blue Wilt runs the same. We're gonna talk about the gear. Most of this stuff is from Phase 2 Gnomer Gun. Actually, um, almost almost all of that. We got the blacksmithing headpiece from level 40, phase 2. This one is by the way best in slot even from items in the raid. Amulet here is from the last boss Ignomer Gun. Once again, it's also biz. Shoulders here are from Reputation Friendly and very easy to get. So, uh, the cloak I have from STV is from uh, level 41. But you can get the one from second boss Ignomer Gun dismantling. I never got that one. Chest piece wearing double set leather from Ignomer Gun again for the crit chance as a set bonus. And here pants for hit chance, very important. Now the race here I have from blacksmithing. If you do the quest line for epic items for this phase 3 level 50, you will get these wrists, which are not the worst. So I guess you could run these because they are basically for free. Just a series of quests and that's it. I might make a build as, or I might, I might make a guide for uh, the quest as well. So we'll see about that. The gloves, I'm running Rubis. First boss in Gromagon. Once again, great chance, strength, not too bad. You can also run, if you have leatherworking, if, if you're running leatherworking, you should get void touch gloves because these are really good. The pale here is engineering, gnomer gun again, phase two, I mean, hit chance, great chance, unused effect. Even without the unused effect, it's very good. Fans this, we got the reputation of revered, uh, Arathi Basin basically, boots. But you can get very, uh, best installed boots are actually from primal, sorry, wild offerings. It's a new currency, if you will. You can buy new stuff for that. There's also a guide for that for wild offerings, how to get that stuff. And there are boots with, I believe it's 14 strength, 14 agility, and some stamina. Those are absolute bits for this phase. I will try to farm for them. Ring V of Blackstone from Marodon, Princess from the last boss. This one took me quite a long time. Now next up we got Wars and Reputation, Revered, Ring, Protector's Band. Peril from BFD phase one. I did not get the one from Gnemergan from last boss because that's what you would you would want to use because of the attack speed on use. And this trinket, hit chance, crit chance, another thing from wild offerings. It costs 12 wild offerings. You can get one wild offering per one run of Sulfarak or BRD or Marodon. Princess runs, those are probably the easiest to do or Zulfarak. Zulfarak. So I farm dead. Now this trinket, uh, wasn't unique back then, so I farmed two of these trinkets, so 24 wild offerings, and you need plus three offerings to unlock the quest and the vendor. So I raided with two of these trinkets just to wake up next day to see that my trinket is gone and there is no refund, even though it was data mined way before phase three release that these trinkets are not unique, and we still got, you know, F. Anyways, bow here is Falco's thing for agility. If you have the gun with AP and stamina, probably better, but I like to kind of stack agility for crit chance to proc deep wounds. Shield here is Angie's strength. Of the tiger shield is the best you can get. This one is a bit too expensive though, so if you don't have gold, you can do a quest in Ungoro Crater, which is right here. It's called Shizzle's Flyer. It will give you 13 strength, one stamina shield, so go for that one. My boy Shreds the tank was actually running with that. And Thrash Blade is absolute previous sword. There are only two weapons you want to get. This Thrash Blade and the one from the raid, which is the fist weapon. See if I can find it real quick, but I'm not sure. Uh, right here. That's the main hand, right? It does the same thing as Thrash Blade. Just different speed and more damage, obviously. But that's the sword you want to get. It's from a quest that starts in Desolus. I will show you right here in the little building, it tells you to kill Princess in Morodon, the, the last boss, it's, it's really easy, the dungeon, even the boss itself is very easy, if you can find it, yeah, this is Princess, you want to kill her, and this is the ring I was talking about, Blackstone the ring, also you can get the same ring from Wild Offerings once again, with stamina, AP, and hit chance, so if you're struggling with hit chance, you can get it, you can see I'm 2% I'm off hit cap, hit cap is 6%, so, I plan to get me crafted shoulders blacksmithing from the uh, the quest line, epic quest line. We just unlocked it today. So I plan to craft that one for the next raid. So I'll be at 5% hit. Now I could replace this ring for the one for wild offerings for 1% hit. 
So I would essentially be trading. I'd be trading. So 20 AP is 10 strength, which is on the ring. Stamina, same story. I would be trading 9 agility for 1% hit. So I need to take a look into sim. Need to sim it. See which one is better with my setup. But this is what we are racking with. I showed you the runes, what we are going with. So first one is shield mastery. Now you deal more damage when you have shield equipped by 10%. And also disarm effects. This one applies to any weapon you're wearing, even if you're a fury. So that's why fury is underwhelming. Fury has nothing going for them when it comes to headpiece rune. Because arms has taste for blood, which is triggering overpower if you apply rent on targets. And yeah, it has great synergy with the new rune on the wrist. I'm going to talk about it in a second. And the goal, or like the thing you're supposed to look for when you're running Gladiator Stance, you're looking for damage modifiers. So any percent damage increase, you should look for and you should just get it. So you get Shield Master here 10%. Next up, you get Flying Elation 25% after activating Blood Rage or Berserker Rage. You want to rotate between these two. You never want to pop them at the same time. Now on the boss I show there, the Jamal, the second boss, he fears you for the whole raid. So you want to save Berserker Rage just for that. So kind of have to... Limit yourself there. Next up, we got Focus Range, which is on the belt. This one allows us to spam Devastate. So the rotation, I'm going to talk about in a second. First runes. Uh, this is very good. You could go for Active Slime here on cooldown or Blood Surge. It is up to you. Oh, this one actually will not really proc from anything about Harry Strike. So this one is not good. But if you want Active, you know, one more button to press. Sure, why not? You can run with these two. But Min Max is Focus Range. Uh, next up, we got Consumed by Rage, the classic from Phase 1, everybody's favorite. Not really, I'm joking. You have to play around 80 Rage, so I'm going to talk about it once again in rotation. This is just another multiplier damage increase, and this does stack with the new rune called Wrecking Crew. Your melee hits and rage you, giving you crit damage percent, 10%. So, once again, another multiplier. I tried the Rampage at first with AP increase, attack power, but it's not good. This one is not only an active skill, aka global cooldown, but it also is 20 rage, costs 20 rage. We don't want that. We want as much uptime on Devastate as possible, or aka Sunder Armor. So working crew enter great stuff. And next up we got Devastate, which is classic. Your Sunder Armor does damage. In the footage, it did 100% damage, not 150%, like you can see in the tooltip, like it's supposed to. Unlucky there. And last one, we have Gladiator Stance, which is the new stance in Phase 3. Again, more damage increase, 10%, which is just like uh, Shield Mastery. Your block is increased, but you have reduced armor and threat generated. You can still tank easily with this. Even on Iranicus. Iranicus was hard though, but it was once again before nerf, before they uh, butchered him. So everyone can one-shot him. And yeah, this was the rune setup. Now the rotation, you want to look for basically two buttons. I know it's coming, it, it might be a bit boring, but it's just basically Devastate, aka Sunder Armor. You just spam Sunder Armor, and if you're overgapping Rage, which you will, because we have a lot of procs on extra attacks, which is Wild Strikes and Thrash Blade. If you can get the set from Raid, you, get, you, can, you will get another Wild Strikes on the set piece. I will show you. My boy Shrezzy got the full set, so he will be able to blast with that setup. And it is pretty insane, the difference. See if I can find it real quick. Plate right here. And we got Wailing Berserkers. You see the triple set piece? It gives you a 3% chance to get extra attack on the same target after dealing damage with the weapon. So uh, trip three sources of extra attacks. Mental. Crazy, right? So spam devastate. Now you probably should play around this, but that means she, at first, at the first, at the start of the fight, you would have to wait with auto attacks to get 80 rage. No, I just spam devastate, and eventually you will get to 80 rage to proc this. And then it's pretty easy to play around 80 rage, right? If you have over 80 rage, you spam heroic strike. If you don't, wait for auto attack or procs with devastate to proc wild strikes to regen rage, and you will just uh, spam heroic strike. But yeah, just devastate and heroic strike if you're over 80 rage. That's it. And on the AoE, you want to obviously use Cleave, but Cleave is more expensive, so yeah. Also, the upgrade to Cleave here it doesn't really do much because, yeah, multiplier of nothing is still nothing. So that was the rotation. Once again, you want to save Deathwish, um, the unused effect of the headpiece, even belt for execute phase, all this for execute phase. You want to get the Berserk Rage, the same story. Now, I believe all these damage multipliers does do affect these charges. I'm not too sure, though. I, I, I might take it back. I'm not too sure. 
I know Lone Wolf from Hunter, which is damage increase of Hunter by 20%. It does apply to uh, Dynamites and stuff like that, so it might be the same story. Rage Potion, you also want to save for Execute Phase to chunk those big Execute, you know, attacks. Ideally, once you proc Wild Strikes, you want to do that after Wild Strike procs, because uh, there is a... There is a chance you might proc Wild Strikes into the Potion, which is a way over cap. It's, it's a waste. Recklessness, once again, also save it for Execute Phase. Ideally, with all these buffs stacked up for big damage number, uh, I, did, I failed at that royally. Next time. Consumables. That's a bit expensive. So we got Elixir of Agility. Strength, which is Giants. We got Squid for Agility Food. Very good stuff. You got some max HP, not really needed. Depends on the rate. It's easy now though, so probably you don't need it. We got the Great Rage Potion. You would want to get Mighty Rage Potion, which it does, does give you more rage, but also increases strength for like 20 seconds or something, which is insane. But that bad boy was like 7G a pop a couple days ago. Next up, you want to get like uh, this version, but that's usable in the raid because this one is from Ashen Bale or Incursion. So something that dispels your poison. I believe it's called Poison Resistant, the potion, which that dispels four poisons up to level 60. It's a level 14 potion, so we try to get that one. What else we got here? The stones, then stone stuff like if you don't need it at all. Oil of Emulation resets your auto attack, your swing timer. I have this from phase two. For mid max, probably can use it. I might try next Friday, actually. Now, there's another consumable you want to get. It's called, it's called Roids. It's a Blasted Land quest. I'm going to show you on the map where it is at. There's an NPC here. They have all these quests. A gift. Uh, Rage of Ages, as you can see there, that's the Roids. Gives you strength. I'll be by 35 or 25. You can get one for stamina, for agility, <clears throat> and all the stuff. All the stuff, basically main stats. So they all require the same stuff. It's three items. One is from Boar. One is from Bird, I think. <clears throat> and the other thing, not sure. You can buy them all from Auction House. I recommend doing that instead of farming it. Unless you get a lot of time on your hands. But if you hand in the quest, you will get the buff in your buff bar. You will also receive the consumable in your bag. I'm not sure if that was on the, only on one time. Or if it's going to happen every time you repeat that quest. But something to keep in mind to hand in before the raid. Right before the raid. So it's another consumable you can do. You can use. And there's another potion, like I talked about, Elixir of Mongoose, which gives you agility and 2% crit chance. It replaces agility potion. You should get that. Problem is, all, the, all this good stuff is, is extremely expensive. Like, extremely expensive. But yeah, I believe we covered everything. I'm going to talk about macros, right? So, a lot of people are running is into issues in, with the glad stands with macros or, like, not, not being able to use the skills. So... If you guys want, uh, there is a spreadsheet, Excel sheet, that has all the macros listed. Shout out to my boy from Fight Club. I'm not sure. I can't remember his name, though. But he compiled a spreadsheet that has all these macros. I can link that in the pinned comment if you want. But what I'm using is basically before all these attacks, I just do slash start attack. That's it. Like here, right? That's what I do for all my skills here. For all my skills. You can do show tooltip, like execute to see the details of the skill, but not really needed. Heroic Strike is the same stuff going on. Hamstring. Do have Heroic Strike? Hold on, let me find it. Ah, uh, this other one. Is it here? Oh, is it this one? Oh, yeah, this is this one. If you are pressing Heroic Strike, but you messed up and you don't want to use it, instead of pressing Escape, just add Stop Casting. And you can just, you know, double tap and it will, uh, you, will not cost, you will not cast uh, Heroic Strike. Same with Cleave. That's what I use for her. That's the only thing different on Heroic Strike and Cleave compared to other other buttons or other macros. And yeah, I will be streaming every day or am streaming every day on Twitch. I'm also playing Melee Hunters. I'm playing these two classes. I'll be covering or just everything about these classes in this phase, upcoming phases, like I have done in the past. So if you wanna check me out on stream on Twitch every day, I'll have the link in the uh, pinned comment once again. And I have to say thank you all, thank you all for watching. Gladstance is about to make it further now with that Devastate is being fixed. And I cannot wait to see some big numbers. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a good one. Peace.